What is the subject of a sentence in English? It seems like an easy question to answer, but it's not really that easy. For example, uh, I saw the President of the U.S. shake hands with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Very often we say that the subject of a sentence is what the sentence is about, but in this first sentence, the sentence seems to be more about the President of the U.S. shaking hands with Arnold Schwarzenegger than it does about I, and I actually is the subject of a sentence. Other times we tell people, students primarily, well, the subject is what makes the action in the sentence, but my car was repaired last week, my car is the subject, but actually my car didn't do anything, something happened to it. It's possible to say, and very often it's correct to say, that the first word or words in the sentence are the subject, but you get a sentence like yesterday Marie married Mike, and yesterday isn't the subject, actually Marie is the subject. So that doesn't work either. We also often tell students, our classes, that the subject is really the most important part of the sentence. And we come across a sentence like, it's raining cats and dogs. It is the subject. It's definitely not the most important part of the sentence. And in fact, it doesn't have any meaning at all. It's basically just a placeholder for the subject. So what exactly is the uh, subject of a sentence? Well, this last sentence, uh, the idea of a placeholder, brings us one step closer towards really being able to answer that question. The subject of a sentence is the words between the two x-word places. first thing we need to see is what exactly are the X words. Very often we call them helping verbs or auxiliary verbs. Uh, there's 20 really popular ones, and here you can see they are. Uh, they're divided into two groups. Am, are, is, in that group below them, all are tied with present. The other side, was, were, did, have some more connection to the past. But these are the 20 X words. And let's see how we can use them to help us find the subject of a sentence. For example, Mike is happy. Is is the X word. Uh, all X words always appear in negative sentences, so we could say Mike is not happy. Uh, yes words always begin questions. Is Mike happy? And so the word or words between those two places where we can put is is the subject. In this case, it's Mike. Marie and Mike have eloped. Marie and Mike have not eloped. Have is the X word. I can move it to the front to make the yes or no question. Have Marie and Mike eloped? And I see that Marie and Mike are the words in that space between have and have. That's the subject. We're really starting to see that the subject is more a place in a sentence rather than any specific thing that we can explain. The subject in the next one, for example, is pretty long, but we can find it the same way. We know that were is an X word because when I move it to the front, I make a yes or no question. And we see that when we see X, the X word in these two different positions, the space between that place in the sentence is where the subject goes. They wanted a wedding party. Here, in the affirmative sentence, we don't see the subject, but we know that to make a yes or no question, to make negative, we need X words. In this case, we can use did or other sentences we may need do or does. But when we form the negative and when we form the yes-no question, we find the two places that we can put did, and immediately we see what is the subject. It's the word or words between those two places for did. Next week, the couple will wed. Uh, I just threw this in to show you that actually, even when there's words in front of the subject, when we make that yes or no question, we know where the will belongs. Next week, the couple will wed, the couple will not wed. 
will the couple wed next week? In fact, very often we take those words that come before the subject and move them to the end when we form that yes or no question. And in this case, the couple is the subject. These are little tricks. Again, I learned them from my teacher named Robert Allen many years ago, but they're very helpful and I like them because they're practical, easy things that students can do to find the subjects and to start to locate the different places in the sentence, which will later allow them to start to check, edit, and form their own sentences more correctly. If you have any questions or comments, please, you can email me at robend at mpc.edu. My name is Richard Abend, and I'd be very happy to see you or hear from you. Thank you. Bye-bye.